One, two, three. Welcome to this evening's Skelter. My name is Joe Austin. This is a Skelter special. It'll be one of a number of specials that we'll do throughout the year. And the subject of tonight's program is the false curfew and the consequence of it. Not told from the archives of books or magazines or papers, but told from the memories of those who survived and lived through the curfew. Skelta is a program that is promoted by Falcha Fierce to Hear and Fail and Fuddle. And tonight's program is in conjunction with the Falls Commemoration Committee. And I have a number of guests. At my top, I have Monica Colbert, who lived on the fringe of the area that was, that was uh, sealed off. Pat McGivern, below her, who will tell an incredible story. And Fran McCann at the bottom of the screen. Fra is a 15 year old involved in the resistance. And he'll tell his own story. I uh, went on to become an MLA for the area. Just to put this in context, the British military operation directed at the residents of the Falls, or some would call the Lower Falls, was the biggest British military operation in Ireland since 1920. The IRA resistance to that equally was the biggest IRA operation, probably from the same period. In the vicinity of the Falls, the British sealed off an area that comprised of 300 homes. They killed four people, 47 civilians were injured, and 18 British soldiers were injured in that gun battle. The British media hailed the, the operation as a tremendous success. In later years, the British government and the British Army went on to announce the failure that it was. To quote a well-known British general, the British Army had to win and the IRA had to survive, and they did. So that's the setting for those three days of events. So, for a, a young man, what age would you have been? Well, I was 15, Joe, at, that, at that, that time. I'd just left school the year before. And uh, I worked in the Irish News, I worked in the dispatch department in the Irish News. Uh, there had been some skirmishes with the British Army in uh, the run up to it, uh, and uh, in a, a number of different areas, not except Bella Murphy and places like that. There, uh, but I remember word coming through um, to the Irish News that serious uh, disorder had broken out in the Falls area. I lived in Albert Street which was near enough the spine of the area that separated the pound only from the falls itself. Uh, and uh, I got on the bicycle uh, and, and work and uh, left and was like a, a, a her flying through the side streets up in the Albert Street. Mm -hmm. By the time I arrived at uh, my family home, threw the bicycle in and was on my way out and my mummy was screaming at me uh, about going out into the middle of this here. Barricades were getting built uh, the you could smell uh, gas uh, coming through the wee streets and over over the roofs, and there were already literally hundreds and hundreds of people uh, involved in street resistance uh, against British forces uh, in in the area. How was that resistance manifesting itself? Well, you... there was a sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, was it was it a, was it a hand to hand fighting? Was it? Blockade, barricades, how did the resistance, as you say, manifest itself? Well, I think initially, uh, from my understanding, uh, after the raid on the home, and I think it was Balkan Street, uh, the McGuire household, uh, uh, at a wake, uh, there was some hand to hand fighting between British soldiers and uh, mourners at the, uh, at, uh, at the house. Uh, but when news got around uh, that this had taken place, uh, it became one of uh, close um, resistance. Uh, people were using battles, petrol bombs, stones. Uh, they were putting up barricades to try and stop the, uh, the British soldiers coming in. They were flying through the area in their armoured cars and their jeeps. Uh, they were forming snatch squads and the crowd were going to confront them. And confront them. It's often said, and I have to say that the initial raiding party, it, it, it was in the area of 300 homes, but of course, the curfew, the military curfew, was extended to three, nearly 3,000 homes in, in, that, in that wider area. But 
Um, was there any any sense that this was about to happen? Was there any? You, you mentioned that there had other, been other disturbances, but um, was there a marked deterioration prior to that between the British troops and the the local people? Well, Joe, and, uh, it's hard to, to, to put to, to, to tell that story without putting it in its context. You know, six months before it, or, or nine months before it, in the same area, uh, unionists uh, with their, their 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 police force uh, attacked the community. There burned quite a number of houses, had murdered people uh, on Devis Street and in Clannard and in Ardoyne. Uh, just days before it, uh, the they attacked. Uh, the short strand area of Belfast, uh, where the British Army stood by and allowed uh, the Unionists through to, to carry out that uh, that th those attacks. Uh, so there, 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 there was some stone thrown and some conflict and uh, that that had taken place in the run up to that. Uh, but certainly, this was the biggest. Uh, as a fact, in fact, as a fifteen-year-old, you know, I was amazed at the amount of people. Uh, it was like 69 all over uh, and then this local community. The frustrations of that year or that nine months and uh, the build-up of tensions that have, that came across uh, uh, manifested itself on, 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 on the streets and that people were not prepared uh, to take any more of it. Okay, I want to bring Monica in now. Monica, I know you didn't live in the area immediately that was curfewed. I know you were living quite close. You were, my understanding of it, and I, I'm working on memory here. You were in your very early 20s. I think you were a trainee teacher at the time. So what was your experience of this momentous event? Um, you're right, Joe. I was just turned 20, and I was a trainee teacher at St. Mary's College. Um, and I'd lived under Louis Street all my life. And we were just on the periphery, but still, you know, below, below Springfield Road was where you were closed off. Um, yeah. And it was a Friday night. Um, Michael was in our house, my boyfriend was in, in the house um, in the evening and then I, I'm not quite sure how we heard but that you had to move, stay in or move out of the area. If you wanted to get out of the area you had to go out of the area then um, and Michael had to go. Now in 69 I was beside Clannard and Bombay Street and Cooper Street where the houses were burnt and I'm just thinking as I'm telling you this I hadn't thought of it until I was talking. In 69, my sister lived up the road and she made us all go up the road for safety. But in 70, at the curfew, there was no mission I was going anywhere. It was my house and I was staying down there with my mum and my daddy and that was that. And we stayed there. But it was the weirdest sensation that you were being surrounded and you had to stay in and you couldn't get out. It was like one of those war films were you know it was like encompassing a ghetto and you were not and you didn't know what was going to happen and the noise and the soldiers and the sounds and the one thing that i think back now is we didn't have a phone there weren't phones in our street so if you weren't home you couldn't tell your parents you weren't home and that happened my sister-in-law and i can explain that later but yes. just locked in and all there was was rumors and anger and the smell, when Fra talked about the smell, I had written that down. There was a weird smell, and that's obviously the CS gas. Um, but there was anger. I was angry, Joe, that anybody could think that they could lock me up in the house and say, you can't do this. It was almost unreal, unbelievable, that we were forced to stay there, and all of this happened, and people were shot, and they came, march, and the noise of people marching feet and all that, it comes back to you. It didn't. When, when, when you first asked me, I went, what can I remember that I don't get mixed up? And that's one of the things I remember. And the other thing that I remember is that in our street, in Louis Street, there was a convent and there was a school. And I don't know whether it was on the Saturday that there were soldiers and there, you know, the wooden barriers with the barbed wire around it. Yeah, yeah. Whether that was a rest station, whether some soldiers came to rest there while others went in and out. But I always remember them sort of laughing and smiling and I'm going, this is unreal that they are doing that and, and, and think that it's okay to do that. I want to, I want to ask Pat now, and we're going to return to Fra just to give us a, a sense of that, that battlefield, that battleground. But you were, again, a young woman at the time. What was your recollections of those events? 
Well, I was in my early 20s then and I had three children. The youngest one was only eight months old. We had no phones or anything then. I lived in Sebastopol Street at the time. Um, first thing I can remember was all the rent and all, it was just before the actual internment started. And the next morning, the early hours of the morning, you could hear people squealing, mothers crying for their sons, wives crying for their husbands, babies crying for their daddies that were getting arrested and getting beat in the street. Some of them didn't even get their clothes on, their shoes on, they were getting trailed out of their houses. It was so frightening. Um, I was really terrified. Uh, I couldn't get milk and there's no, no phones, so what did you do? We were shouting over yard walls for people to pass it down bread or pass it down milk. It was very, very frightening. Just to put that in its context for anybody that maybe wouldn't know that part of the Falls Road, you know, shops were closed, monetary closed. People were, as Monica says, not allowed to leave their own home. There were 500 arrests that were made, and many of those who were arrested later took action against the British Army, many of them quite successful. And there is success. There is a sequel of film footage that shows some of those people have been beaten on their way to the armored cars. But I want to return to Fra's experience again. Fra, <coughs> you're 15. This is probably uh, the most severe rat that you had seen up until that time. So were people of the age, your age, were they, were they, were they organizing? Were they, were they fighting with the British soldiers as they came across them? What, what, what were people, what was, was there a plan and if it was, what was it? So the, 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 from my knowledge and understanding of it, there was no plan. Uh, it was a reaction uh, to what was happening in, in the area. And uh, it's wherever the British soldiers came into, wherever the armoured cards come into, the crowds went. Uh, and uh, I know that I lived close to McDonald Street and Mulford Street, Servia Street and Mulford Street there, and there was hundreds of people there, and they were battling uh, with British soldiers on on up the, uh, on up the street. Uh, I think, so I think it was uh, large but sporadic uh, through, through, throughout uh, the, 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 the area. Uh, I think that uh, the, at, at, at the, the, the stage or short time after, I remember standing, it was really the first time uh, from 1969 that you heard quite a lot of gunshots or gunfire and uh, bombs going off at, 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 and the thing. And that, that heightened the resistance, you know, that the, uh, what, what you've done is that you, you got as close as you could uh, the British lanes and in an attempt to try and force them out of, out of the area. But I, what I could say is that it was a, united, a, a community united uh, and a common purpose, and that was to remove the British soldiers uh, from, from that area. But they seemed to be everywhere. And uh, I know that afterwards talking to people that uh, there, there were people that came from other communities and got in before uh, they, they had started to seal the whole area off. One of the things that, that, that Pat had mentioned there was that there was this kind of sense of, of really desperation. If you were a mother or if you had a young family and the shops were closed and you weren't allowed to get out, uh, how are you going to, how are you going to feed your children? How are you going to get nappies? How are you going to purchase milk? Was there any, was there any ability by the community to form you know, a resistance that could facilitate that, or was it very much make do with what you've got in the cupboard? Well, re re remember that this uh, this was sprung on the community. Uh, it was uh, an event that happened, uh, uh, and so you had a spontaneous response uh, by the community itself. Uh, no one knew at that time. You weren't thinking of a day, 24 hours or 48 hours down the road, uh, the, the thing. So it, it was just a thing that went from one hour to, uh, uh, to the other. And uh, it was certainly a battle of wills. Uh, I don't know uh, if, if uh, the, the people had been planning to go to get milk and out. But I would, I would say not, Joe, because I, I, I do think that the, 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 the intensity of what was going on in the community, uh, that the shops would have closed. Uh, and uh, 
and people were rallying in their in their uh, in many different parts of the area uh, to meet the onslaught of uh, British forces uh, coming coming in, and uh, because within a short period of time, uh, maybe seven eight o'clock, I, I I can't recollect the time uh, that the intensity of the 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 gas uh, grew. And the amazing thing about it is that for some reason people had been informed that the best way to to kill the gas uh, was to leave basins or buckets of uh, pools of uh, uh, vinegar uh, at the, at their doors, and uh, many people done that. And people were going over; they were getting hit by the gas. And I don't know about uh, it, it made you worse or cured you, I think. But it was uh, people went over. Uh, you seen other people doing it, and you you heard it was a miracle cure, so you went over and done it, and then got back into into the thick of things. I remember. Uh, been uh, the, uh, say the rat was going on in Albert Street, but you you were all over the area at different uh, different parts of it, and uh, you just kept trying to put the pressure on uh, the, the 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 British soldiers uh, to, to, to get out of the area. They had employed uh, uh, the the uh, the rat squads uh, backed up by their, their 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 vehicles, and they were making uh, runs to try and catch people on on the hop, and the crowd would run up. Or uh, try to attack them as they were doing that, and they would run back. So it became a, a turn and fro uh, at, 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 at that time. I want to bring Monica back in again with the particular story about her sister in law, I believe. But I was a young man, a bit younger than you, Fra, over in Kerry Kill, where I lived. Uh, yeah, nice. and you, were, you were in a bad age, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but that area, which is not really that far from the falls, but because of the bar because of the barricades and the blockades, we were relying on word of mouth. We were relying and we shouldn't have been, but we were relying on the the news stories about, you know, these great successes by the by the British Army and the unprovoked attack by a hooligan element. But the horror stories that were coming out about bodies uh, been left on the street, not only those who had died, but people who were injured. And I, and I made the point that there were nearly 80 people who were injured and, and they, they had been left lying where they were injured. So it was a freedom from our point of view who weren't in the immediate area. It was quite a disturbing story. Monica, your sister-in-law, you were telling me a story before we began. Your sister-in-law trying to make her way home. So you take the story up from there. Yeah. Fra was talking about the, the basin and the vinegar and she told me that story as well because... My sister-in-law lived in Spinner Street. She was 18. She was young. She had just started in the BBC, working in the newsroom. Um, and she was, they were coming out of work and they were, had stopped. Once from work had stopped for a drink. And when they were there, one of the bosses came over and said to her and her friend, you may go home. There's trouble up the falls. So they tried to get home. She said she got as far, they got as far as Albert Street and you could, there were hundreds of people about. Um, the soldiers said she could hear the marching of the soldiers' feet, and she said women were out with basins, with water and vinegar in it, and a gas for people's faces. So she said they couldn't get up and they couldn't get past. And they met a girl from St. Louise's who they had gone to school with, and she said, You're not going to get up the road, you can't. She said, You're going to have to stay here. My granny's gone up to Turf Lodge for safety, come up and stay in her flat, in Divis Flats. So my sister in law and the other girl who was 18 had to stay in the flats overnight. But they couldn't tell their parents. They couldn't get in touch with their parents. The only phone was at the chip shop at the top of Spinner Street, and it was closed. So they had to stay there, and she could hear the noise, could hear the shooting, could hear the trailing of those barriers with the wooden and the barbed wire around it. She said it was horrendous and terrifying, the shooting, the noise. And she didn't make her way up home until the next day at 12 o'clock. All I can think now is... How did her parents feel? What were they thinking? She'd gone out to work that morning and she didn't come back and they couldn't get in touch with her and couldn't find her. And I think that's one of the memories that stays with me, how terrified they must have been. And also how many other people were like that, struggling to get home. But for the goodness of people, she was saved and she was in that flat. Um, but she witnessed the basins, the water and the vinegar and their tears run out of people's eyes because of the same yes, gas, you know. So, quite a scary story, I think, looking back. She was only 18 and had just started work. I want to ask Pat 
just a, another experience, another dimension to it. And I know, Pat, that you were shot actually during the hunger strike, during the death of one of the hunger strikers you were shot. So for those, again, who wouldn't necessarily know the history of that, and it's a point that Fran made, the threat of being shot wasn't just simply, uh, you know, it wasn't made up. It was a reality. There were people being shot. There were people being injured. Some of the raids that all of this was done under the gaze of the British Army raiding homes for IRA weapons. But, of course, we, we, we later learned that the nature of the raids, and the British Army themselves admitted that during those raids there was looting, there was theft taking place in houses, there were holy pictures dragged off walls, there was considerable damage done and made light of it. Was this something that, as a young girl, that you were frightened that, okay, it's that part of the falls now? Are they going to come for me? Are they going to come into to our street? Are they going to come to my house? Was that something that went through your head? Uh, what actually happened to me was one of the hunger strikers had just died and the women used to go out with bin lids and bang the bin lids on the front of the road outside the library just to let people know that the hunger striker had died. Uh, there was all soldiers in Leeson Street and I was just, at, we were across the road from Sebastopol Street to Leeson Street with the bin lids, all the women. There was a young man standing, doing nothing, just outside the library, taking photographs of the women, beating the bin lids. Um, soldiers come up Leeson Street in a red gear. There was no red going on at the time. Um, he pointed his gun over at the young man. He was taking a photograph and I pushed him. I bent down again to rotten the bin lid to get more people out to say they were going to start harassing the young lads. And he just fired right into my hand. When I got to the hospital that night, no, at first I was afraid to go to the hospital in case I got arrested. So I, um, one of the neighbours brought me over and they sent me home, told me to hold my arm up all night, not to go to sleep, that they couldn't get a surgeon. I would have to go to Dundonald Hospital, which I didn't even know where it was. Um, couldn't afford taxis then and, I hadn't, and didn't even know how to get to it. So they told me to come back to the Royal the next morning to see a Mr. Rutherford, who was a surgeon. So the threat, I mean, uh, I'll touch with Monica and Fran this again, the threat of really being shot wasn't an idle threat. It was, it was something that in your case, albeit later on, something in your case that actually did happen. Fran, darkness is about to fall. Um, were people, were the, uh, you talked about the resistance been high and, and lots of people been involved in it. But under the cover of darkness was when most of the, the raid that was carried out by the British Army happened uh, during that period. Was, were people frightened? Were they apprehensive? Did people know, for instance, I have to ask you this, and again, it's the point that Pat and Monica had made, no telephones, no mobile phones. Were people in other parts of that part of the falls that was curfewed, were they aware? that there had been deaths, were they aware that there had been so many people injured? Was that common knowledge? And if it was, did it, did it deter people? So, uh, no, uh, the, there, there was quite a lot of rumours going around about how many had been shot dead, uh, how many had been injured in different parts of, of the area. Uh, there, there were parts of the area that were, when the confrontation with British soldiers, that they were firing the 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 CS cost straight at people, uh, and, and the thing, uh, and did it concern you? Obviously, you were worried, uh, but you were uh, you were a fifteen or sixteen year old, uh, and the thing, and the the task at hand was uh, your your battle with British soldiers uh, on the streets, but as darkness fell and uh, the the intensity of the the the, the battles in terms of. Um, the the, the, the the gunfire and the the, the, the explosions uh, grew and uh, I, I remember and uh, Monica had spoken about it I'd really never stayed out of the house in my life mostly because my parents wouldn't let me uh, 
<laughs> and uh, the I, I was with a big friend, uh, big Joe Boyle, and uh, we uh, had been up and around Balaclava Street and Alma Street uh, at, at, at that time, and uh, as the, the 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 British army started to to, to, to move in uh, the area, coming from all angles of of, of the area, the, the the space I think that uh, people were working in or riding in resisting and uh, it got smaller and we ended up I, I, the time just goes at that stage and we ended up in his house uh, which was in the street uh, just off Raglan Street and uh, when, when, when we got in uh, as uh, mother and father that was us grounded for the night and I was pleading with them pleading with them I was more worried about what my man and dad would say uh, to me to them uh, uh, that would have happened on the streets of the falls and hang in. So I ended up staying the night uh, in, in, in that house right through the Saturday. And you were real, seriously, really, really worried about uh, that, that thing. Not realizing that uh, all your parents were worried about is it something that had happened to you and uh, praying that you would, you, you, you would be okay. But there's some classic photographs uh, of that time. And one that has always stuck with me is at the top of Alma Street is uh, the, 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 the Jeep British Army Land Rover uh, being uh, ground at the front of the, 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 the road and firing, the, pl fl firing at the CS gas over roofs, multiple canisters into the middle of communities. Uh, and, 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 and the thing. I just also remember looking when you were on the streets looking up and you seen this uh, density of smoke or thing raising in the air and then you got hit uh, with the smell. Uh, sometimes you picked up people were sick, uh, people were vomiting, people were thin because of uh, the effect of this and uh, soldiers in gas masks uh, run, run, running down uh, the, 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 the street. So the yeah, the 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 next lot of ours in, in terms of the, uh, the 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 Friday night was it would have been in the, the maybe the wee hours of uh, Saturday morning uh, that, that there was still shooting going on, uh, but uh, it had started to dwindle, and I think that was uh, because the British Army had started to get footholds uh, in the in the surrounding area, and uh, the, so you were in a house and you were listening to this. Uh, you could hear the screaming, you could hear the shouting uh, coming uh, uh, from the thing. And within, uh, uh, as they got more and more into the area, you could hear the doors getting kicked in as they t started to do uh, the, 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 their raids. And like, so that's, that's all, all a memory, but uppermost in my mind was uh, what was my man dad going to stay for me? Say for me. <laughs> One of the concessions that was gotten from the British. Uh, and I want to come to it in more detail, but gotten from the British occupation force, which it effectively was, was that people may have been or may be allowed to go to mass if they if the rat and then if the resistance stopped. So I don't know why you recall that, but I know that from my experience, people who had never hadn't been to mass in ten and twelve years made a point of going because it meant they could get out of the house, they could see, they could hear what was going on. It was a form of communication. You talked about, we've all, Pat and Monica, yourself have talked about what the British were doing. Um, there was an IRA presence. They were involved in the gun battle. The, the Republican movement had quite recently split. There was a, an official IRA. There was, of course, a provisional IRA. They were engaging. Was this something that people certainly in their own lifetime hadn't seen. I mean, uh, were, there, were, there, were there IRA volunteers on the streets with weapons? Could, was this something that people could see? Yeah, the, 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 you could see people uh, on, on, on the streets. Uh, and, and not a lot. I mean, you could see some people at street corners with rifles, with handguns. Uh, there was, I take it, grenades getting through. Uh, I uh, remember Charlie Hughes, who was the OCD of the provisional area around the area uh, at the time, uh, 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 taking part in the, in the battle, uh, throwing hand grenades or uh, uh, at the British. 
And uh, so there, there was quite a lot of activity, Joe. And uh, that he, again, it was uh, intense street fighting, but also intense, an intense gun battle uh, going, on, going on at at the, at the time. I wasn't involved in anything at that at that time. This was all, I have to say, a big learning curve uh, for 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 me. Uh, and I, but I think the interesting thing was that the 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 dividing line uh, for the curfew was Albert Street, where I lived, and uh, I lived at the corner of. Uh, Jude Street and Albert Street uh, and our front door wasn't turned but our side door wasn't uh, that led, led out into the thing so people were on my mom was saying that we let it in but on the Saturday night I think about 6 o'clock uh, that people were allowed out uh, for an hour and uh, I remember the fish and chip shop uh, the, at the front of the falls that they were giving I think they'd give fish and chips to people and, and, th- and all those shops had opened and then uh, people were were herded back into their homes again, and uh, that that was that. That's when I got I got home, and it was like a return of a prodigal son. You know, I was expecting a beating, and and I, I got uh, hugs and kisses. So the returning son. I want to, I want to with the last ten minutes that we have, I want to deal with the breaking of the curfew. But I, you've just answered a question that Monica had asked me earlier on. And you, Monica, you had a memory of announcements being made over loud healers. I think that's what you're referring to. It was the announcements of the lifting, the temporary lifting of the curfew and the reimposing of the curfew. Um, so I, I, I assume, Fra, that the notification was done in that way. Yeah, that uh, people would be allowed out for an hour, I think. So people just poured onto the streets. And uh, out of their homes. And I got just a wee interesting uh, story, and it was in the aftermath. As uh, the area got smaller, uh, with, with the British uh, coming in, uh, I always remember friends of mine that, that, are, that are both uh, dead, and they, uh, Frank and George Gill. Uh, George always tells a story, you know, that both of them, they're identical twins, both of them were in a house, I think it might have been Balkan Street, and the Brits went down to the house, and I think there was about 15 of them in the uh, and uh, George and Frank would have been uh, connected at the time, I think. But uh, they were in the house, and the British soldiers were beating them and pulled uh, pulled uh, Frank out, and uh, they they made him get up into the uh, the the lorry, which was a bit of an effort at the uh, at the time. And uh, the British officer came came down and looked, and he says, uh, "He seen George down." He says, "How did you get out of that lorry?" And uh, there was a bit of an argument. I think it started slapping George until he turned around. And he seen Frank stand or sitting on the one. He says, "My God, there's two of them," you know. And all the madness and all of the things. There was these those wee stories yeah. uh, that 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 come come out of it. Uh, and and, and uh, at, uh, say on the Saturday night, when 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 you got home, you were just relieved. But in the aftermath of the 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 the, the, the curfew itself, you, you didn't realize uh, that uh, that some of the photos are quite shocking. You know, at every street corner, uh, there were sandbag posts. Uh, as you as you, and, and that was on the Monday uh, when you went sandbag posts. And I remember going around Leeson Street, down uh, uh, and the and the area itself. There was pretty soldiers land on the thing. The and uh, so you were quite aware. Of the later the, the the statement and the message uh, that that they 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 were they were sending out and that that that, that was it and that I think that just set set the scene uh, for, for it but uh, the point that I was going to make was that uh, they had uh, driven unionist MPs around every street in the falls to show them how they had put the crappies down they believed. And of course, the truth of the matter was that they didn't. Yeah. But I, I, want, to, I want to spend the last few minutes that we've got um, just in terms of, and I know Pat or, or Monica may not have been actively or directly involved in this. Uh, Fra, you were in curfew either in your mommy's house or in the area. I was probably under the bed at that time, Joe. <laughs> but the breaking of the curfew, and for, again, for those who may not know the details of it, <clears throat> this curfew was rigidly enforced by the British Army, and Pat makes a point that 
the threat of being shot wasn't something that was uh, an idle threat. People were getting shot. So many civilians were injured. People were beaten. People were dragged from their homes. People were, were been taken, as far as they knew, God knows where, in the back of military lorries, trucks. The, the appeal went out really that the, within the curfewed area, that there was uh, no food supplies, particularly for children. And a number of women, uh, women always come to the rescue, but a number of women, including the late Maura Drum, organized a march from Anderson's town to confront the British soldiers. Now, many women joined that march. They weren't from the west of the city. But did you, this is a question to any one of the three at any given time. So were you aware that efforts were being made to liberate the area that was occupied? Were you aware that this march was making its way down the Falls Road? Well, again, Joe, I think uh, what people relied on, and, and, and your parents were probably aware uh, that some of, this, some of this stuff was going on. Uh, and uh, I remember going over into the area and, and, and walking uh, with, with the, 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 uh, the, the, the march coming in. But at 15 or 16, you, you didn't really realize uh, the, the, the significance or the importance of what, what was taking, taking place. Uh, and, uh, they were, and I remember it went down, but you went over down Slate Street and you walked with it right around the area. And people came out of their houses and joined in and, and things like that. And lo looking back, it was an amazing, an amazing uh, sight uh, that uh, that these thousands of women had come together and had forced their way into an area that had been uh, absolutely sealed off, corner to corner, street by street, uh, by armed British soldiers. And I think so. It was an amazing, it was an amazing feat. Pat and uh, Monica, were you aware? I know you may not have been on the march because of your age, or were, but were you aware of the mobilisation of women that was happening? Only, only, only when they were there. You didn't know beforehand. You mm -hmm. didn't hear about it. But when you look and see now the people coming in, you realise how significant it was and the bravery of those people to do it, because they would have heard all that we'd heard, the shooting, the noise, and the rumours, and yet they face that down to come in and help people um, and it's only after the event I think you realise how important that was and also same as Fras says about the photographs and saying it was on the Monday or Tuesday you realised what a big occupation it was you know in the middle of it you didn't think about it but, but it's only in hindsight you realise what an amazing thing those women did coming in to support and help others I want to let Pat in, uh, our time is up, but I want to let Pat in, and then I want to just ask each of you, is, is there an individual memory that you can recall of those three days in July? So, Pat, the, the march down the fall road, this Women's Liberation March, marching, marching in the area where the British Army had already killed a number of people, and um, were quite capable of killing more, would... Do you remember the march? The, 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 the first thing I knew about the march, I didn't know it was going to happen when I heard the women singing. And we were just glad to get out to see them. And I've seen so many women, I was really astounded. It was brilliant. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't go down along with them when they were going down Mason Street and the State Street because I had three children at the time. So it was just amazing to see so many. And they were so brave. They had milk with them and bread and messages. And it was just brilliant to see them. Uh, your, your individual thought that you want to leave us with, given, you know, can I just make this point? You, you have, you've made the ultimate journey. You've traveled from 15 year old rider to the, the MLA for the area. That, that's, that's some, that's some, some journey. So can you leave us, do you have one particular thought? I know.
We seem to have a technical problem with Thras sound, um, but we're going to we're going to return to it. Sorry, sorry, Joel. Sorry, sorry, uh, that's okay. What I was asking you there, and if you'd repeat it, if you don't mind, do you have one 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 story you can leave us with that sums up those horrible days? Yeah, the the uh, Joel, the the there was a, a, a couple of things. Emma's arguing in the background there. Yeah, uh, there, there was uh, for me, you know, it, it was the start of a journey. Uh, Nineteen sixty-nine, uh, shorts drawn, our doing, uh, and uh, the curfew. And it, 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 it uh, certainly was a, had a major impact on what I'd done in my life, like internment, right through the to uh, to the, the 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 hunger strikes, bloody Sunday. Uh, and many other events that took place in, 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 in the community uh, on, on the direction that I went uh, in the thing. Uh, but I've had one th memory of it, obviously, uh, the people who died, the people who were injured. But secondly, and Monica mentioned it earlier on, uh, oh. the, the, the smell of CS gas forever is, is in, in, in your, in your minds. But the intensity of a community come and get together uh, to fade off, uh, 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 like a, what people would say, a foreign foe coming in to invade their community. And it was the first real, uh, against the, the British forces, uh, it was the first real on street battle that, that had taken place. So there's many memories in there, but one is certainly the, the, the CS, uh, CS class. I, do you have a, an obeyed memory that? Has, that's left you with the thoughts of that time. You mentioned, and you're the only one who mentioned it. You mentioned the women saying, "Yeah, so we shall overcome." And, uh, we also done a reenactment of the occur a few few years ago. The the women from Tarnow, and it just brings memories back to me because when the young fellow was acting as a Brit, I nearly murdered him. <laughs> I actually thought he was a Brit. <laughs> and that sticks in my head that I nearly killed that wee boy that day. Uh, hey, Joe. Yes. The other is the thing with that is. is oh. Brian, you're not allowed to curse on. You're not allowed to curse on Zoom, Brian. Brian, Brian nearly did, Joe. The, he, did, uh, he actually did. The, the, let the dog into the living room here. Uh, no, who let the dogs out? Yeah. Uh, who let the dogs in? But uh, I think what uh, the. Yes, the the, the, the the singing on the for what I was going to say. And, and what was it? Heartrending. Uh, I asked Monica, who's in and out. I'm not sure why they're still with us, Monica. They have lost you. And if we have, I apologize. And let me just kind of thank you for, for being part of this. This is a special scale. It is remembering those events from the third to the 5th of July, 15 years ago, when a community uh, refused. No, I can't see you. I know. Something's happened. Can uh, you hear me? Yes, I can hear, can't see you. Uh, when a community resisted. Uh, do you want to leave us, Monica, with the, with the thought that of remembrance at that time? The only thing I can think of, I can you hear? Yes, of course, yeah. Yeah. All I can think of is, um, I suppose, the fear and then the anger that this could happen and that they would think that they could get away with it. And also the bravery of those women coming down on the Sunday. I think that's, that's the overriding memory I have of it. That seems to be, I think all of us have talked about the resistance and the, the liberation. So on that note, Pat, Fra, Monica... Can I thank you for being my guest on this special Skilda? I would invite anybody to go online to try and follow the events that are been organized around this monumental period of the history of the Falls Road. So from Skilda to all of you, Garmiana, thank you.